Hey guys, uh, I'm here today uh, to do a video on. I'm just gonna start making stuff. I I've, I don't really know. I had the idea when I was on a jog. I was like, you know, maybe I'll just produce. I'll put like a drum beat together or something, and you guys could just watch. I'm not sure if it'll turn out well, but I guess we'll see what happens. So, I mean, generally, I think a lot of my stuff. It's either start so like a sound, or I'll just kind of start messing around with percussion. I really like putting percussion stuff together. So. I don't know, we'll just put a drum rack in and then start loading in some samples and see what happens. So I set it to like 128. Sometimes I do like 130, cause like I don't really like the four on the floor that much. I always, it's like I'll start that way and then I always wind up not doing four on the floor beats like the one, two, three, four kick drum. So um, I use the Sonic drum kits a lot. I like them. I wanna eventually upgrade to the, compl the new complete bundle. Um, because the stuff from th that I have, I have the complete seven, so the samples are kind of I don't know. I'm just kind of over them at this point. I also use. I have the suite, so I have a lot of drum racks that come with Ableton Live as well. Sometimes I'll just put one of those on, and I have the push, so I'll just kind of start programming in there. But for now, I'll just start loading in some samples and pick some cool kicks and hats, and I don't know. We'll see. Um, kicks. That's pretty heavy. Oops, just do that there. Let's try doubling that up and then. I'm gonna go and put them, I might use these and I might not, I don't know, we'll see. Um, I'll put them, choke them together so that they can play and they'll cut each other off like, um, going around what am I doing here oh, I must be on let's see we're gonna start with a four on the floor for now and then I don't know I'll probably wind up changing it up I do Let's see if we can get something cool here. I always change the velocities while I'm doing it just to, you know, obviously make it seem more natural and less redundant.
Whoa, that is loud. Grid back on. Ooh. This could be interesting. So it sounds weird now, but if you put on the metronome with it, you can kind of hear it. Like if you get another sound to make it more stable, it'll actually work. So you kind of need to find a steady sound or something like not exactly like a metronome that's going to be on every beat like that. But um, I don't know. We'll find something that should hopefully kind of make it you know, make it feel like it's not all over the place because it's really awkward to listen to without that sound. I feel like this is getting kind of a um, kind of a almost boys noise esque, I guess, a little kind of weird beat. Get some shakers on this. That'll be cool. Um. Do we have shakers in this list? Let's try progressive house. Tight hits, drum rack, log claps, hits. Um, let's see some hats maybe. Uh, shaker ish. That's a good one. Let's see what we can get with these two. Ooh. I don't know if I want to go all the way across though, but we'll find out. go in I'm gonna do this really quick just to give them more interest go to this one that one's fine go to this one and or actually no we'll move this one and we'll move that one I guess there now they got a little more kind of movement to them oh shit we did I think we only did three on that one take it back um, we'll get rid of these and we'll change them out for this 
we need one more here. Adjust it. This is actually pretty cool. I like this. Um, stuff. It's generally my go-to <laughs> stuff. I don't know why. Um, okay, let's put a groove on it. Let's just do swing. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Let's see what other kind of stuff there's on here. Maybe some. I don't know. This could be interesting. Hmm. This might be cool. This one has, I think, velocity on it. Let's take that. I don't actually, I don't know if I can't remember. If, I think zero would be no effect, I believe. That's actually very swingy and kind of interesting. Um, let's go with that for now. I'm going to put on, I think I'm going to get a weird pad going. I don't know how weird, but see what we can come up with. Um, let's use the Ana. I like the synth a lot. Uh, if you haven't used it, you'd probably demo it. I think they have a demo for like 15 days or something on it. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's awesome. I like it. Big fan. Uh, and I actually, when I first started pr producing, like I watched Sonic Academy religiously. I highly recommend it. And at the time, I was using Logic Pro, and most of their videos are in Ableton Live. But uh, it transfers over. I, I've had people ask, you know, I've always recommended Sonic Academy. Um, because I learned so much information from them. Like, I kind of want to get it again just to go back, like, the whole year. It's, it's worth it. I mean, you just watch endless videos. So um, no matter what doll you're in, I highly recommend Sonic Academy and also their the stuff they're coming out with now with their synths. Obviously, I use their, the Sonic drum kits are them too. And uh, they have, like, a new kick drum. It's not new now. I think it's a little bit older, but their kick drum. Uh, th I don't have it yet. I think it's just called the kick but it looks pretty sweet. I'd like to pick it up at some point. So, um, Sonic Academy, if you want, if you ever see this, good job. Um, all right, let's initialize this patch. Turn this down. Get something here. Let's see if it, maybe after I filter it down, it'll be better. Um. Gato. All the way, four bar. Yeah, okay. Cool. Let's. I guess it's some stereo with. I use this on like pretty much anything that doesn't want that I don't want in the center. I don't leave a whole lot in the center. Um, it helps like with mixing and creating space. Um, it just gives you a lot more room. If you don't use stuff like this, or like you don't widen some stuff, or, or pan to the hard right or left, stuff just kind of built, kind of builds up and just gets muddy. Um, it's it's hard to kind of 
get a, a big mix. I, I, I'm pretty sure like most of the big guys do this too. I think I've watched an interview with, uh, what's his name? Laid back Luke. And he's like, I just pan everything out really far except for the stuff that needs to be in the center. And he just, he just smashes it with a limiter, I guess. So I use a stereo with tool. I found this in a video. Um, it was on e music courses for like mastering in the box with Ableton live. And he had designed the stereo with tool and I, was, I use it all the time now. So I, I guess you could just copy what's going on on the screen right here. I guess there's more to it though. The chain, I think, yeah, one is, has nothing in the other one it has the, the stereo with, or the simple delay on with these settings and then one's pan, they're each hard panned and that's, that's really it for the tool so I guess you could pick that up mm. all right let's get some other stuff going on here And I'm just messing around. I have nothing planned here. I just decided to do this and see what happens. So if you're enjoying this so far, awesome. If not, sorry, I guess. Mm, I don't like that. Not a big fan of this pad. I'm going to play with it a little bit longer and see if something comes of it or not. Lots of repeating sounds. If you're new to audio production, welcome. When you're doing it, it doesn't drive you crazy though. I mean, at least it doesn't drive me crazy. Some people it might. Um, okay, my other jam I kind of go to. Let's see if this can get kind of weird. Um, I got this sample pack, Total India, off Future Loops site, I think. I got the entire thing, the Total India, and it was on sale for like a hundred dollars, but it's like 15 gigs of samples. It's pretty awesome. There's some cool stuff on here. Um, I kind of always jump. I love the flute and it feels not like my stuff. It's kind of always in, I've been using them a lot. I'll just kind of splice them together for now. I'll probably just throw one on here that works and show you what I usually do. It's either going to work or it's not. Um, we'll see. Stereo with tool, EQ, cut up low end, simple delay,
actually really like that. That's cool. I might actually turn this into something. Um, maybe I'll just keep going. Uh, I think maybe I'll, I'll toss a baseline on and then I think I'll end the video. Just, I think it's pretty cool for the first one. Maybe I'll, I'll put it up and see if you guys like it. And if you love, if you enjoy it, I'll definitely do more of these. It's and hopefully, you know, I can make them more interesting as I go for now. It's just the first one. So, uh, I guess let's try out a base. Um, Hmm. What do I want? Um, maybe you just go back into the drums again. So I'm in headphones. I'm so uh, it's kind of hard to gauge what's actually going on. I'm much better with my monitors, but uh, let's see. I just would like to maybe do some EQing on the drums and stuff, just to kind of maybe clean it up, so you can kind of see what I do. Definitely going to cut out, you know, the low end on that. Get rid of the top a little bit. Probably Let's see how these are competing. Yeah, I could definitely cut out a good amount of low end on this. I'd cut out the low end on anything that doesn't need it just because even though even, I mean it's subtle but when you start adding I don't know at least a lot of other stuff in you really didn't even need to cut this I, I'm just kind of anal retentive and I really like to keep I like to kind of create big spaces and if, if you kind of have to really be selective on what's in your track if you don't if you want that so that's the specific sound you're going for but like other people like kind of like a washy sound it just depends on the style of music you're doing Yes, I know you can, if you're going to say something, you could send them or something to a different channel and cut the low end and be a little more economical with your EQ use. I am not. I just throw stuff on until I get what I want. Sometimes it, you're obviously towards the end of the song or in the middle of my CPU gets a little shaky. And usually at that point I start freezing stuff or I will... Um, sometimes, a lot of times I just try to bounce stuff to audio too to commit. It makes things easier. You can't really go backwards. And you, you, I used to not do that, and I would get caught up with sounds for such for way too long, and tracks would take me too long, and it, it, it more or less just starts driving you insane. So as I'm sure you've watched other videos with other producers, just just commit to what you're doing and just move on. And usually, like if you commit to something and you're you like it, but you're kind of like I don't know you'll come back to it later with fresh years and you're like, oh, I'm glad I kept that there and just moved on because I, then you would have wasted another hour or two on a sound or something that you either would have got rid of in now that you like it or, you know, vice versa. So, and if you don't like it later, just delete it.
not awesome at all. Not really sure what I'm going for here, to be honest. I don't know if I want to try to do something bouncy or just get like a really kind of growly bass line. But it's hard though, too, because the kick drum in this is like, it's a really heavy kick. So I'll probably have to get rid of most of the low end on it and do some pretty, I would probably do some heavy com like side chain compression. I, I just need to figure out a riff at this point. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. see how this sounds all together it's I'm not totally happy with it but I, I don't want to sit here for an hour trying to get a baseline make this video way too long <laughs> Why not? It's okay. It's not very good though. Again, it's hard for me to EQ this stuff and kind of get it right. I'm in my headphones. I generally do this with monitors. Headphones get a little muddy and can be over exaggerated. I actually kind of like the glue compressor. Again, you need to have the suite for this, but, uh, it just has like a nice bounce to it. Um, I usually do kick pre effects. I actually find it has less popping too. Like a lot of times you, you can hear some. The normal compressor pops a lot. It's kind of hard to get the pop to not go. I think it's just the algorithms, the way this one is. I, lately when I use stuff like this, um, let's see, reverb, I will bust and just kind of get a little bit of the top end of the bass to give it a little personality and depth. I will
So that's another way to get some interest with your sound. Maybe some auto pan. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, as far as what I do next, I actually don't know. I'd have to sit around and play with it. Um, let me see if I'm inspired and maybe do one more sound or something if I can think of something here. You know, I think that's it for now. I'm not sure how long this video is, so it's probably getting up there at 15, 20 minutes. So I hope this was interesting, may have helped you a little bit, kind of seeing how I approach starting something and going from there. Um, I try to get something, inter like, you know, something I like, and then from there, I I'd like to start laying it out in the arrangement, and then you kind of start working from there, maybe adding new sounds, What, how do you want the track to evolve, etc. So maybe I'll do a video on that another time. So hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching.